I tell them I have Huntington's and they think I'm doing drugs and dope and you know I mean it's embarrassing it's really embarrassing to you know not be able to control my body and sit still right. and it's even more embarrassing to have somebody not believe me when I tell them I mean that's really I mean God how you know they think I'm doing dope or drugs I realize people do that stuff but that is not what my problem is my whole life is nothing but anger and emotional you know of course that's all I got is anger I'm so tired of people being so judgmental, that's all. We've dealt with it your whole life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a very vivid memory of meeting Pierre for the first time. He came into the clinic to be tested. So how are you getting along? Uh, pretty good. Some days are better than others. But... While you're here, as we have in the past, I want to check out your coordination and your eye movements and things like that. So the uh, heel to toe. Like and I remember standing in the hallway as Dr. Bird was having him walk. When he came to us, he came right after being discharged from a psychiatric hospitalization in which he was severely depressed and suicidal. Um, and it was very clear that he was despondent and really wanted out of life. He had moved to Seattle because he was so humiliated by the course his life was taking. He didn't want his family, his brother, his uncle, to ever see him again. He was that ashamed. I have little uh, spots of memories when I was a kid. You know, I remember a lot of snow in Massachusetts. My brother was a year and a half uh, younger than I am. My mother had gotten so sick already that our father put up. And then uh, our mother took us and uh, moved to North Carolina. I guess she finally told him, you know, what's going on with her and the family and what happened to her parents and what, you know, and what she has going on because she must have been symptomatic by him. I do remember him saying very, very angrily, I never ever forgive your mother for bringing Huntington's into our family. The University of Washington had developed a medical genetics clinic that was one of the first such clinics in the country. After opening that clinic, one of the most common kinds of uh, disease in families that came to their clinic was Huntington's disease. And in fact, they had so much Huntington's disease that they had trouble seeing all the patients. I started the neurogenetics clinic at the University of Washington in 1974 and in that time period we've seen uh, more than 500 families with Huntington's disease and uh, those are unique families not related to each other so 500 unique families and uh, we don't keep track of the exact number of people we've seen with the disease but it you can easily estimate that there have been at least two or three affected people from each of those families on average. So that means we've seen more than a thousand people with Huntington's disease in our clinic over the years and that's a, that's a very large experience. To see that affecting families, to see it occurring generation after generation, to see the, the range of changes from mild to moderate to severe, and to see how that impacted people's um, lives, their careers, their family relationships. And a lot of diseases uh, have that kind of impact, but certainly Huntington's is a, is a standout in terms of the, the range of impact that it has on both a patient and the family.
mom brought Huntington's into the family. She was in a bought in the hospital in North Carolina. Back then it was considered a mental disease, you know. It wasn't a genetic disorder, it was a mental thing. She was unable to, you know, fight that. She would uh, get very angry, and when her Huntington started kicking in, she would have, you know, outbursts, and just when, you know, she'd start, it was like uh, uh, she was losing control. I've always felt bad because I was never able to help my mother out, especially when she uh, wound up going into the hospital, and, and I couldn't take her in. I, I couldn't help her. I just was not together enough to take her in and let her live with me. I couldn't deal with it. I just wasn't together. Imagine what it would be like to be a young boy, like 10 or 11, and dad leaves, and leaves him alone with a mother that's becoming increasingly more and more physically and mentally disabled. He really lost all of the people in his life that could have parented him. He lost all at once. She was pretty much in her disease, you know. She was unable to, you know, fight that. She was there, and but our dad took off and left us. He just bailed and left us. He didn't want nothing to do with her. It was a horrible time. <laughs>